Hey everybody, I'm recording a new intro at the end of this video, mostly because somebody sent it to me and I checked it out and I watched like the beginning. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I, I, I made the assumption that because I found the intro, uh, the introduction interesting, that I would then continue to find the video interesting. And to be honest, there were the points got far less uh, interesting as, as the video went on. And the funny thing is that the beginning of, of the video was actually Destiny playing a clip from a debate he had with Sargon of Akkad on gender identity. And it was mostly me commenting on the things that were being said there. And I think like, once I've edited it down, I imagine like half of the video will be with reference to the introduction, which means that actually this video won't have um, much to do with JK Rowling. Like it will have less to do with JK Rowling and Contra Points than it, you, you would think. And certainly, and I thought, but I recorded the video now. I'm not going to not upload it because I think that'll be pointless. But yeah, I'm just gonna let you know that if you were expecting a video of me like tearing apart Destiny on this this point about uh, JK Rowling and ContraPoints. No, most of like, I don't know what I'm going to include. I haven't edited it down yet, but I think it's not going to be that much. So mostly, I don't know what I'm going to title this video. I'm probably going to title it Destiny on JK Rowling and ContraPoints. But then I'm saying right now, most of the video is actually me responding. Well, not necessarily most, but a decent chunk of the video is going to be me responding to Destiny's debate with Sargon, and even then just the clip at the beginning. Okay, I'm going to be reacting to uh, Destiny's initial reaction to ContraPoints vs JK Rowling. I was watching a, a tiny bit of it, and I was like, yeah, I can at least say something in response to this. Uh, I, I'm going to go in blind, just like I did with the Philosophy Tube thing. Funny thing is, I was already working on a, a scripted video right now, but then somebody sent me a link to this. If you send me a link to a video on Twitter, there's a Pretty decent chance. If it's a recent video, there's a pretty decent chance I'll try and give some kind of comment on it. So this is me doing that, and we're going to see what Destiny says. I've seen a bit of it. I, I saw a bit of it before I decided I would react. I've got it at 1.25 speed again because I like listening to things on one. Well, I like listening to things on double speed most of the time. Uh, but obviously, I understand some people don't. Some people maybe English isn't their first language, and therefore they definitely wouldn't want to be listening to people speak on double speed. Uh, so put it on 0 0.75 speed, I guess. I mean, as we've already established, I talk pretty fast. So me speaking at double speed is probably going to be similar to Destiny and Sargon speaking at 1.25 speed. So whatever. Okay. Or me speaking at double speed. Me speaking at regular speed. I can't speak. Uh, there is a weird thing going on where I can't like... If I go off of the OBS recording thing, it will go thingy. So I'm going to have to use the button on my keyboard to press play and pause. So hopefully that doesn't make too much of a difference. There are women who definitely feel like less of a woman because they can't have children. And I, I think that a sterile man would probably feel like less of a man as well. Okay, so I'm going to react to this. I didn't. I know this is not Destiny, but I just want to respond to this point. Uh, I disagree with what Sargon is saying here. I understand what Sargon is saying. Sargon's point is that, uh, to the extent... The thing is, what Sargon is saying here actually presupposes that sex is a spectrum. By having this idea that there is... If you can't have children, you are less of a woman. or And if you can have children i don't know if you can't have children you're more of a man i'm not sure if, if that follows but yeah it's kind of that makes sense if you think sex is a spectrum uh but it doesn't if you believe that sex is a binary because then you would say well there's uh you know both two different biologies centered around two different types of uh, gamete uh there's no reason to think there's any kind of being more or less of a male or a female. You can say there are things which are associated with the female phenotype, uh, secondary sexual characteristics, and of course the ability to give birth. But if you define uh, a woman as, a fe as the female phenotype and a man as the male phenotype, centered around the two different gametes, then there is no logic to saying that if you cannot give birth, you are less of a woman. So I think the funny thing is here that Sargon is trying to defend, I think, the idea of uh, biological sex as being a relevant factor to being a woman. Uh, but in doing so, Sargon is actually uh, implying and accepting tacitly that biological sex is a spectrum. Uh, and that's, the, that's where the logic of if you can't give birth, you are uh, less of a woman comes from. And I don't believe that because I don't believe sex is a spectrum. I believe sex is a binary. Uh, so that's just the point there, that the idea of being, you know, so it's, it's funny, of course, because plenty of, you know, I would imagine plenty of the queer theory types do believe that sex is a uh, spectrum. And that's why, by the way, you will see, and I pointed this out before, 
uh, gender critical feminists are not the ones who are putting all of the focus on the ability to give birth or having a vagina or whatever else because it is the um when somebody argues that if a woman and i pointed this out in response to a contrapoints but i'll point it out again if somebody argues that if a woman is unable to give birth then her claim to being a woman is no more valid than the claim of a male somebody who's biologically male then they are the ones putting all of the focus on being able to give birth the gender critical position is no there is the male and the female phenotype some females may be unable to give birth but that does not make them any less of a woman it is the gender uh, asset, gender essentialist gender uh, ideology extremist whatever gender identity extremists who are the ones that are saying hey you know if you are a, a biological female and you cannot give birth then your claim to being a female is no more valid than that of a biological males. So actually, it is it is not the gender critical people putting the focus on the ability to give birth. And you know, I don't know if Sargon would call himself gender critical. I know that he would disagree with aspects of trans uh, ideology, but we'll see what uh, happens next. Yeah, but we don't want people to feel that way. Don't don't you think that? Don't you I think? don't know. Like I mean, like I'm just trying to. You can yeah. I, I... Oh, okay, so I'm going to be pausing maybe more than I was with the philosophy two thing. Destiny here seems to be presupposing that there is a value judgment attached to being a man or a woman, and that is an essentialist position. Uh, insofar as you would not want somebody to feel like less of a man or less of a woman, it would be because of your beliefs about the uh, validity and the coherence of, of those terms. So I don't want people to think of themselves as less of a man or less of a woman because I don't believe that that is a coherent way of understanding gender from a factual position. I do not believe that ethically we should want people to feel more or less like women or more or less like men, because I do not believe the categories of man and woman uh, are ethically relevant terms because I'm not a gender essentialist. If you think that feeling like less of a man is an insult, is, is an ins I was about to say insulting term, <laughs> is an insult, uh, then you are a gender essentialist because you are implying that there is it is ethically relevant whether or not you're a man or a woman. And if you're saying it's ethically relevant whether you're a man or a woman, you are implying there's some ethical value to being a man or a woman, and that is essentialism. So, no, yeah. Uh, it, it, you can say we don't want people to feel that way from the position of wanting to have a coherent definition of gender, uh, but you cannot say what Destiny seems to be implying is that we should not want people to feel that way is a point of ethics, which I think makes no sense. I agree Wait, that it's not nice. On that particular right? thing, do you want? Way? Do you think it would be good, or do you want society to feel like if a man can't have a child, he should view himself as less of a man? If, if, an, if a woman, in standard usage of English, or just any language, which going back into the midst of time has been adult human female, then that is a biologically essentialist word. That's the, the, the purpose. Uh, I mean, so again, the thing with biological essentialism, I've pointed out before, uh, I don't think it makes sense to say that a woman is defined by biology. I've always said that a woman is a sociological, psychological, phenomenal concept that is inextricably tied to the material condition of being a female. That's always been my position. Uh, I'm not going to say Sargon's wrong here. I would argue that actually having a saying that a woman is purely a biological thing, I think doesn't reflect the reality of how kind of pervasive the idea of womanhood is in our society. Um, that's only my main objection there. And regarding essentialism, uh, I think it's not essentialist because ultimately uh, essentialism to me implies something a lot more reductionist than the gender critical understanding of uh, of biological sex, which actually does take into account uh, the variety of forms that a particular uh, biological human construction can, can take. So yeah, I, I don't know if I agree completely with the framing of that, but whatever. So, it's designed to reflect a physical biological reality there okay there you go it is so we have categories that we've created because we believe that they reflect some underlying physical reality the concept of female that isn't <laughs> right. a real thing that's not something that exists in really? nature yes really yes There's... i don't agree with you <laughs> okay if we eliminate all human beings um where do you find the concept of female <laughs> in the animal world I no suppose. you don't why, you can find some things you... You, because what you have is you have... see yeah okay here the disagreement is over a concept versus the existence of something, and this is this is a key point. Um, the what people are describing when they are describing females and males would still exist without um, without human society. But the point that Destiny is making here is that 
the categorizations wouldn't exist. And it's important to bear in mind this is this is not a a meaningful um, point. Uh, it's not a point that has much weight because this applies to anything. You know, there's lots of things which uh, do not exist. See, I think a good analogy here, in particular, would be to uh, the concept of a species biologically. There is there is no reason. Uh, let's say okay, so so me and my sister are biologi- genetically distinct. We are genetically related, but we are genetically distinct. Uh, me and my cousin are genetically distinct. We're genetically related, but we're uh, genetically distinct. Uh, me and some Boris Johnson, let's say Boris Johnson, uh, British Prime Minister, genetically distinct, genetically related, and then of course me and Barack Obama, similar thing. Uh, and eventually, of course, you go from from that to uh, you know dogs, cats, uh, fungi, uh, sharks. All of us are genetically related, uh, and the question becomes, where do you draw a distinction? And the answer is, well, there's actually no logical place to draw a distinction. There's no place where it necessarily makes sense to draw a distinction. Uh, you know, there is, in some sense, the the difference between the genetic variation between myself and my sister is only different from the genetic variation between myself and an octopus in terms of magnitude. And the question becomes, well, at what point does the magnitude matter? And we invented this idea, which is that a, a species is... Uh, when two, if, if two animals cannot produce bio, uh, offspring which are themselves fertile, uh, viable offspring, they are different species. That's at least the definition that I learned um, at school. So I'm kind of putting my faith in, in my biology education at school. Okay, I looked it up and I'm not completely sure that I'm right. This is, like I say, what I learned at school, but then I tried to look into it and it seems like it's a bit more complicated. But the point is, no matter what it is, we have decided kind of arbitrarily that certain things are different species. And that doesn't mean that every single instance is arbitrary. We can come up with consistent rules and apply those rules consistently. But even in that event, we would say that the rules themselves were chosen arbitrarily. Uh, So species do not exist. Uh, Significantly, the, the implications of this are virtually nil for our understanding of the world. Like they don't... So I'd be interested to see where Destiny is trying to go here. Because, yes, do I accept that there is no reason why, you know, like, uh, men and women are are biologically distinct in the way that loads of human beings are biologically distinct? And uh, am I willing to accept that there is no intrinsic reason why the distinction between man and woman, male and female, needs to matter more than the distinction, you know, any other form of biological uh, distinction. In the objective sense, uh, yeah, okay, there, there's no reason for that. But that's true of lots of things. That's true of, again, species in particular. So I am interested to see where this argument goes um, from destiny. We have some things that have collections of certain features, and if we want, we can label yeah. them in certain ways, right? And yeah, that's yeah, what we do is we label saying. things because we yeah. get some value out of it. We have people that generally yeah. have vaginas, can give birth to people. We've got people that generally have dicks that fuck yeah. people, right? We call some of these yeah, females, people. yeah, we call some of these females and come some of these males. But there is nothing yeah. in science that says we must have this category of female. We must have this category of male. Or that we must no, find them. Okay, yeah. see, that's that's ir- that's irrelevant. You know, I'm wondering what Simon's going to say, but yeah, there is nothing in science that says we need to have categories of male and female. That's true. Yeah, like I don't even need to respond to that. That's that's true. There's nothing uh, in objective, you know, cold hard reality that says you need to define people these ways. You know, you can you can divide people up however you like. Uh, I'm interested to see what the relevance of this is going to be. Philosophy that we need to think about there. Science, science can only tell us data. We need to be able to interpret that. And for that, we need philosophy. Exactly. So philosophically, yeah. when we're creating these categories, <laughs> we have to understand that the reason at the end of the day we create these categories like male and female isn't because science tells us to, because science can never make these kinds no. of things. I hope he's not going to say the reason we create these categories is like to make people feel better or something. I almost feel like that might be worse going. It's because we as a society decided we want this definition because it makes all of us happier. That's generally... <laughs> no, I mean, that's not really it, though, is it? We, we have these definitions to help us understand the world. And this is... See, I, I've been thinking about this before. I was speaking to someone in my Discord about uh, presuppositional apologetics and how I think about it a lot with relation to uh, transgender identity. I do think there is an undeniable um, postmodern, postmodern tendency uh, that's growing now that seems to think that truth in itself does not have any kind of uh, objective value. Uh, now, it's important you might say, well, hold on, Michael, you just conceded 
that there is no such thing as objective truth. But the thing is that there is because there are objectively uh, what Destiny is doing here. He did something very sneaky, and you will notice this. He implied that the only relevant facts are scientific facts uh, by ignoring the sociological aspect. What he said was there is no uh, biological reason, no scientific reason to say that males and females are distinct then ignored the fact that there is a very good sociological reason to say that males and females are distinct. Because females have been identified as women and subject to oppression based on that. That now the category of female uh, as woman, woman as adult human female, exists in objective reality uh, because we say it exists. And that that now has to be the uh, viable as a means for feminist analysis that having that category of woman as an adult human female uh, has a role in explaining the uh, gender depression and gender inequality in a way that it, it then becomes deficient in that capacity when it is trying to serve to, when it is defined, sorry, as uh, being by identity, where suddenly it no longer has uh, as much utility in explaining sociological reality. So, the, you know, this claim that it's about making people happy is bogus. It's absolute bogus. Um, that That's all there is to it. You know, our, our definitions, if anything, I would argue is almost the opposite. Uh, a lot of our definitions, especially when it comes to uh, politics and kind of um, sociological theories, are about describing tremendous uh, inequalities and quite, um, you, you could say, harmful, dangerous inequalities. And the... Therefore, you know, all of all of these definitions we have are going to be tremendously fraught. Uh, and, and certainly some people might not like to be included in, in certain categories where they, they should be included according to an honest analysis of sociology of society. So, yeah, this claim that the purpose of, um, of male and, or any kind of construct is to make us happy, I think, is complete nonsense. Probably how everything works in reality. No. The idea okay. that bigotry is simply hate, I call... So I think that's the Sargon stuff The done. Westboro Baptist Church theory of bigotry. I'm sorry that I'm literally covering up. I, I kind of want to move where my face is, but I'm also worried that in doing that I could screw everything up. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is. Taylor Swift gay? Is that a thing I missed? Why other people will get so fucking upset if somebody else is like gay or trans. But I think the problem is that for a lot of people, it's not enough that they want to live their own individual lives and that they want to have their own individual like ideas about things. They need to feel like the society around them supports and reinforces that. So if you have an idea of like what a man should look like or what a man should act like or how a man should be, and society is sending conflicting signals about that, you're not secure enough in your own definition of what it means for you to be a man or what masculinity means. Because now that society is giving you a, a bit of a conflicting view on it, you feel the need to change society to conform with your own views. So. Uh, mm, <laughs> but obviously, I mean, that's really funny because society, generally, I would say most of society is not on board with this idea that identity is what determines whether or not somebody is a man or a woman. Uh, I would say there is a very pronounced silent majority of people who, who feel that way. And certainly living in a, in the UK, where it's a big thing, I've seen lots of trans people who are not comfortable with, with how, you know, having things be defined for themselves. They are, they are trying to force everyone else to accept their definition. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how he said this without uh, imploding into a hole of contradiction. You'll notice, by the way, we are quite far into this video right now. It, he just listened to the contrapoint thing for a while. I was just skipping it. Uh, to be honest, I will admit, I'm. I thought this was going to be a long video because I spent a while on the introduction, which was just a clip from his debate with Sargon. But to be honest, I feel like I might even have to do a disclaimer at the beginning to be like, "Hey, if you're hoping that I'll be responding to Destiny a lot, I probably won't be, because it's mostly just or Destiny on contrapoints, because it's mostly the Sargon stuff. That's when the interesting things were saying uh, being said. Nothing interesting has been said here, really. But yeah, I do just want to point out the irony of saying like, oh, these people can't handle people having their own definitions when that's exactly the problem that uh, gender identity extremists have. Uh, I will also say this, though, that I, I actually even reject that as a criticism. So not only is it a hypocritical criticism, uh, and therefore in accepting it would actually be almost to my advantage, I don't think it's a good criticism anyway, because the reality is, and I, I've the thing is, it's important to understand, transgender people are not the only people having their identity questioned. And the people who, who think that 
have a very narrow-minded idea of what it means to conceive of your own identity, which is to say they think that conceiving of your own identity is an individualistic, you know, kind of uh, neoliberal postmodern thing where you just have your own idea about yourself and that's it. No, that's not true. Um, having an identity about yourself necessarily entails, I would say, having uh, beliefs about how those those concepts which define your identity must apply to wider reality. You know, I'm not saying... Uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of when um, I used to debate libertarians and they would say like, hey, man, if you want to give more money to the government, why don't you just donate more money to the government? I'm like, no, I'm not saying that I want to give more money to the government. I'm saying that you should be forced to do it. And then, of course, their heads explode because of the NAP or whatever. But that's kind of the thing. Like these people, you know, libertarianism and transactivism is kind of the same idea of failing to understand the inherent legitimacy of a collectivist view of society um and that's kind of the thing like people talk about social constructs these people don't want to understand social constructs as a social thing they want to they should they should change the name like trans activists should start calling them they should be like you know gender is an individual construct because they you know when they call it a social construct they're, they're lying because they clearly don't think it's a social construct because they don't believe how society views gender should be relevant uh so for me personally when i say gender is a social construct i mean gender is a social construct I mean that how I define gender is is relevant to how society at large defines gender, and how society at large defines gender is relevant to how I define gender. I am I am a man because I am a male. Biologically, I am a male. And if you say that you are a man and you are not biologically male, uh, you are just as much undermining and attacking my sense of identity as I would be in saying that you are not a man. That both of us, and you know, my point here being, it's it's irrelevant to talk about who is or is not attacking the other person's identity and saying that attacking somebody's identity is in some way a bad thing to do. Uh, attacking somebody's identity is a, a morally neutral thing to do, and this is going back to the fact that there is no ethical value in being a man or a woman. Um, it's something that you should do if you believe in truth uh, in any kind of objective sense, and it's certainly something you should do if, if you believe in society and you believe that a social construct is actually a social construct uh so uh it's not okay to just say well i should be happy with how i define gender for myself because in doing that you're actually denying my identity because i'm not just saying that i as a man am a man because of um, my male biology and i think maybe even uh, some uh, gender identity extremists would object to me even saying that i'm not saying that i'm saying man as a concept is to do with male biology and that statement is a part of my identity you know my, when i say when i define myself by a certain term i'm not just talking about my relation to that term i'm talking about the term itself so whatever so i do think that if a conflicting message is given in society about what something is or ought to be and you disagree with that some people can't live with that dissonance or they can't live with that disagreement and they need to force society to kind of vent their own personal uh, uh, takes that's how, that's how it feels to me that's like i mean i, I just it's such an irony black hole I kind of almost want to check the thing to see if I don't know, anybody's pointed out, but like how, how much of an irony black hole is that just uh, talking about people not being able to accept other people disagreeing with how they define gender? Like, and here's the thing, it's important to understand, here's the difference, okay? Somebody disagrees with how I define gender, I argue with them, and I try and see what their arguments are. If somebody says, hey, you know, gender isn't to do with biology and biological sex, I try to talk to them and say, why do you believe it's not? I try and have an actual discussion with them. But if I say, hey, gender isn't about identity, then you just get called a bigot. You know, so actually, which side in this in this debate looks like it's the one that is irrational um, and afraid and threatened at the idea of having their, idea, their, their ideas of identity challenged? It doesn't seem to be the gender critical position. The gender critical position seems to be that yes, they are invested in how woman and man is defined by biological sex, but they are willing to engage. Anybody who wants to dispute that is welcome to uh, have a debate, to have a discussion about that. Uh, there is, you know, it's the it's the trans activists, the gender identity extremists who are the ones saying, no, gender is determined by identity. And if you disagree, you're a bigot. So yeah. They are the um, ones who appear to be threatened by the idea of anything new and want society to conform to uh, how they define it. I, I could be wrong, maybe people don't, but I, I'm pretty confident in that. The easiest way to make everybody walk back on this is to just get some big, burly trans men 
and just march them into women's dressing rooms. Like, I feel like you would, I feel like people would change their opinion in literally one encounter. Where you have a, a big, burly, fucking facial hair trans man is in, the, is in the changing room. And then a cis woman is like, what the fuck are you doing in here, you piece of shit? And like, oh, well, I have a vagina. I'm a, I'm a trans man. But I have a vagina, so, you know, you said we should go to our own dressing room, so I'm just going to chill in here with you. Is that um, but you know, he, here's the thing. You realize that being big and strong and burly and all those things uh, are, are not intrinsic to being a man. The thing that is intrinsic to being a man is male biology. Like I'm, I, I get, I get the point that's trying to be made here. I, I get it. You know, I've always said that I don't think you can police this issue anyway, which is why I, I think it's not that much of a relevant issue. Now there is the question, and what I've always said is I'm not interested in enforcing it. I'm interested in the ethics of it. Is it ethically okay for a um, biological male to enter a space designated for biological females. Is that ethically okay? And my position has always been no. Now, I will say again, with um, changing rooms, it, it will be easier to enforce uh, because people, you know, will actually have their genitals on display. I will again point out that genitals are not the be all and end all of biological sex, uh, but certainly they are pretty reliable indicators. And obviously, you know, all these. Uh, fantasies about people having, you know, uh, in intersex things and stuff like that, or differences of sexual development. It's it's exaggerated to varying degrees. It's not like a realistic thing that people are going to encounter. Uh, however, you know, I can I can accept that there is even some ambiguity there. But the point is the ethics of it. And I guess what Destiny's saying here is like, if if a biological female looks like a man in in lots of ways, then it follows that it is then ethical for them to or unethical for them to go into a woman's changing room and it's ethical for them to go into a man's changing room or you know bathroom or whatever uh i i i get the logic the logic is obviously well if somebody looks like a man and they're in the woman's changing room then that's going to make women uncomfortable yeah uh, I, I can see that. Uh, basically, the argument, I think the best case scenario for this argument would be that you're saying, well, no matter what, it's kind of like there's an equivalence. So uh, no matter what, there is uh, there are going to be some people who look like biological males in a space designated for biological females. So either it's going to be a biological female who has used surgery and hormones and whatever else to appear... Um, in terms of secondary sexual characteristics, as if they are a biological male, or it's going to be somebody who is a biological male and looks like a biological male, but identifies as a woman. So either way, this would be the argument. If you say it's all about sex, then you can end up with that situation. And if you say it's all about identity, or, you know, ultimately about identity... Then you end up with this situation. So, uh, you know, you say, oh, well, it's the same situation. But I would think, just maybe a thought, uh, if we're talking about a scenario where somebody who looks like a biological male might be allowed to enter a biological, a, a space that's reserved for biological females, um, I would say that what might be relevant is which of these two people is actually a biological female. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. Is that, am I, am I making too much sense here? I'm really confused. Like, that's the thing. The best case scenario is to suggest that these two situations are equivalent. Because either way, you're going to end up with some people who look like biological males in a woman's restroom. Either way. Again, because of the two reasons I said. The difference is that only one of these two situations involves somebody who is actually a biological female. So it seems to me like... If you are somebody who wants to preserve the integrity of uh, female-only spaces, then when you're presented, <laughs> it's so stupid. When you <laughs> you're presented a scenario where two people who look like biological males might be entering a woman's restroom, and Destiny goes, "Hmm, person who believes that uh, female-only spaces should be reserved for females." Here's here's a challenge for you. <laughs> 
Two scenarios, somebody who looks like a biological male will be entering your, your private female space. Um, and, you know, uh, one of them is a female and one of them is a male. Which one are you going to pick? <laughs> what a... Ch I don't get it. Like, it's so... It makes no sense as an argument. I, I Like, here's the thing, okay? I, I respect it as, as something which serves to... Um, complicate the argument and i'm not adverse to people uh, complicating things yes sure it is true that um it's not as if limiting things to biological females will mean that every single person who enters a woman's restroom will definitely 100 percent of the time look like a biological female in terms of uh secondary sexual characteristics and things like that there is uh Nothing stopping a. I mean, even if we just ignore the kind of gender ideology aspect of it, uh, I mean, bearded bearded ladies exist, right? That's like a thing, isn't it? Like that's like a you know, like circuses existed, and like bearded ladies were a thing. Um, so you know, even ignoring that, but also I don't know, like maybe you could get like people who do it for kind of performance art reasons. You know, there's there's like innumerable reasons why somebody might decide whether they're a biological female or a biological male to present themselves as much as they can to look as if they are a, a member of the opposite sex. There is there is no doubt about that. Uh, one, though, these are going to be the very small minority. Uh, and two, uh, significantly, it, in one of those scenarios, it's still going to be people who are biologically female, though. Like, and again, I'll just stress this point. Let's say, so if we say that trans women can use uh, women's restrooms, and also if we say a trans woman is just anybody who says they are a trans woman, then I could use a restroom. Uh, I could use a, a woman's restroom just because I say I'm a woman. Now, there's also people, you know, uh, I'll, I'll give a specific example just for a hypothetical. Jamie Dodger, who is obviously a uh, biological female, identifies as a man, uh, and has done, uh, gone to some considerable effort to make uh, themselves look as if they are a biological male who, who has tried to make themselves seem as if they have biological uh, secondary sexual male characteristics. Uh, but here's the thing. If if you have a situation where it's either going to be me or Jammy Dodger entering your female-only space, it's not much of a competition, is it? Because, again, one of those people is female. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just it's a very stupid argument. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Like whether or not like trans women should be allowed in bathroom, it's always they're always talking about trans women. They're always talking about men who oh, biological sex male or whatever that identify as female, that identify as women. That's the only thing that that trans people talk about. Or oh, I'm sorry. See, this is when Destiny kind of outs himself as a bit of a misogynist because he seems to have not realized why it is that the focus is going to be on wanting to keep biological males away from biological female spaces. Like this is. Oh, holy shit. It's so, like, it's so obvious. And it's, like, it's tiring, because you have to explain the most basic things. Um, yeah, like, shock horror. And that's the thing, people talk about, about trans men, particularly gender-critical feminists. Tra gender-critical feminists talk about trans men all the time. You know, trans-identified females. All the time. But they talk about them in a very different context to when they're going to talk about trans-identified males. For the very simple reason that gender-critical feminism is about the idea that your biological sex is relevant uh, in terms of your position in society. So of course they're going to talk about the two in different scenarios, different situations. Um, yeah, there's, there is no shortage of, of gender-critical people talking about trans men. There are plenty of you know, uh, lots of lesbians talk about them all the time with reference to things like my nose itch is lesbian erasure. So, yeah, there is there is no shortage of it. Uh, the difference is that gender critical feminists tend not to talk about uh, biological females, trans identified females, in the context of uh, protecting male only spaces, because that's not that's not a thing. Like male only spaces. I mean, I will say this. Like there are I've I've heard women come out before and say um, that. 
you know, say that they feel sorry for for males who have to deal with with females in their in their private spaces. Um, and I, you know, say thank you for that, uh, women who have said that. But at the end of the end of the day, I think there is a reason why it's not the focus, and it's because it doesn't matter. Like, how can I? I mean, it's such an obvious thing, but I do not feel threatened by the presence of uh, biological females. Full stop. All you need to do to understand this is understand that women are the oppressed group, biological females are the oppressed group, not biological males, and therefore preserving the integrity of biological males only spaces is is not is not a thing. And it's like again, I, I will reiterate it, it outs destiny as a bit of a kind of um subconscious misogynist in that apparently he didn't even like he's not even thinking about it from the perspective of actual feminist concerns and just the very obvious point that um of course there is not going to be as much anxiety around trans identified females when it comes to male only spaces of course that's not going to be a concern because males don't need their separate places and that's why I think even there are like sports leagues. I can't I can't think of one right now, but I'm pretty sure there are some sports leagues where there is a women's only sports league, and then there is a male sports league where women can also compete. And the logic being that males do not need their own segregated sports leagues because if a woman can compete, she she should be able to. That's the logic. Whereas it would be women do need their own segregated sports leagues. Uh, and, you know, it can apply to for lots of things. But yeah, I would say generally that's a job. I mean, you know, I mean, that, that's it. Like, I think it's just, it's as simple as pointing out misogyny is a thing. And the the threat that males have historically posed to females is a thing. And it shouldn't be something which needs to be said. But when he's saying, well, why isn't it that no one ever thinks about trans-identified females or, you know, trans men in, in uh, entering male spaces? Come on. All right, that's the only thing cis people talk about. And then when trans people talk about, um, trans people talk about issues, they only ever talk about trans women. They never talk about trans men. So for instance, when we talk about like Olympics, right? Um, you know, trans people are very quick to point out, oh, well, trans women should be allowed to compete with cis women. Trans women should be allowed to compete with cis women. It's like, okay, well, what are you going to do about trans men? Because trans men will... That's so fucking funny. Oh wait, hold never on. be competitive to... in anything ever. A, a trans male is is probably never going to be able to compete at the highest levels with a cis male. Are you just gonna fuck that whole group of people? Like literally, nobody ever talks about trans men ever. <laughs> wait a minute. I think that's a good point, which kind of caught me off guard. I was getting ready to say like, "Hey, you idiot!" You know, there's a reason why people don't. But then, yeah, like if. A trans man would be completely screwed because a trans man, I guess, would have to compete against other men. <laughs> and that's not going to be very... Uh... That's actually really funny. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> like, you know, trans men have to just uh, deal with, you know, their, their female frames when it comes to competing in male leagues. Oof. That's actually really funny. Yeah, I mean, that's... Well done, Destiny. You made a point which I hadn't, I hadn't thought about, and it was a good point. It was a point that supports kind of my position, so that's funny. Like, it's very weird to me. I don't know why, but yeah. Fuck cares. Like, who's in whose bathroom? Like, people talk about bathrooms like they're some weird fucking like rapist force field. Like, you're a woman and you're running through a fucking school and some guy's trying to rape you and you just run into the bathroom and you're safe. It's like, oh, thank God, my safe haven, the woman's restroom. Like, nobody can hurt me. Like, it's such a weird fucking way of like viewing restrooms. Like, what the, what the fuck? Like, it, I, I don't know. Like this idea that like, this idea that like we have mixed restrooms or something, everybody's gonna start raping and killing each other is just so mind-bogglingly fucking stupid. <laughs> oh my I look. Here's the thing. Um, I half. I agree with some aspect of the sentiment of what's being said here. I do think, and I've spoken to other you know serious gender critical feminists who have agreed. The the trans issue, sorry, the bathroom issue is blown out of proportion. Uh, in that the solution, the the best solution, and I do think this is relevant to the fact that sure, no matter what, there will be, you know, I mean, I think it's relevant to the fact that one, you can't really enforce a, a, a trans bathroom ban unless you're going to be willing to run the risk of uh, letting some trans women through if they pass enough. And significantly, uh, 
willing to run the risk of tremendously and horrendously embarrassing um, biological females who are being told, you know, like, hey, you look like a man. So, so I agree with that aspect, and I think ultimately, the, therefore, the only solution is to have gender-neutral bathrooms with individual cubicles. There. That's it. You know, like, there's not really many good reasons not to. The most obvious reason is, well, because having urinals is slightly more space efficient. That's it. That's the reason. You can have... I mean, okay, so actually, I will say this. I There is one aspect I'm, I'm ignoring, and I will throw it in now. I've had... I've spoken to women. Um, it's so funny, like, how much of my gender critical ideas come from like having spoken to and listened to women and it's just it's really funny because i remember like when the whole believe woman thing was around uh when it came to sorry believe women not woman believe woman one woman um believe women thing was around i, I can't remember what it was i think it was started by anita suckies and it was like listen and believe or whatever uh, and loads of people making fun of it whatever um the funny thing is like i guess i guess i did that and then, and then I I did it wrong because I listened to the wrong woman, uh, I guess. So I don't know, but but yeah. So I, uh, so much of my gender critical ideas just come from listening to women and, and the things they have to say. And I guess um, it's it's terrible because. And the funny thing is, people say, "Well, you didn't listen to trans women." I did, I did listen to trans women. I've read memoirs by trans women, which is I would say that's, you know. That's pretty pretty good as far as listening to them is concerned. Literally reading them, pouring their hearts out into into books. I've read three three memoirs by trans women, um, and guess what? None of those things convinced me that they were actually women. So I don't know, like this idea that oh, if you listen to trans women, it will what what? I don't know. Anyway, um, but I will say I've I've heard some women say like that the the female bathroom is a safe haven it's kind of like a, a collective almost like um a common room for women and that, that's something that women like like the idea that they can kind of just hang out in the bathroom i mean i know women for example love going to the toilet together and i think maybe it's a very male perspective to not view the restroom as uh having some kind of significance like it's just uh, you know, because I mean, that's the thing. Women, I mean, I think that kind of is a good example. Women go to the bathroom together. They're like, hey guys, let's go to the toilet together. Then they all go along. I mean, I've, I think that's a phenomenon. And men don't do that. Men aren't like, hey, do you want to come to the toilet? <laughs> come to the toilet with me? No, we just, we just go on our own. There's very little fanfare around the toilet from a male perspective. But apparently for women, there is. Like, I don't know. I've heard like, and also I've kind of like seen it in films, like women doing their makeup and stuff in front of the mirror and things like that. Like women hang out in the bathroom. So whatever. Maybe from that perspective they'd like it. But I think I think the flip side is he Destiny here seems to not understand why women wanting to have their own private places would be a thing in itself. And I think that just shows a general ignorance, which I think is unfortunate. Like I can I, I would say I'm quite a rational person, and therefore my question when it comes to something like bathrooms is I say, you know, I, I think through the logistics of it. For example, that's why I say I don't support enforcing rules about who can go to the which bathroom, because I don't think it could ever practically work. And that's why I say unisex bathrooms are the best option, because, again, yeah, I think just from a practical stance, they have the fewest complications. Uh, and that's my position. But I, I understand why women feel the need to have their own private spaces. And I also understand why, as a matter of principle, women would not like the idea of having unisex bathrooms come about as a result of trying to accommodate trans people. Because I can understand why women would not want to have their individual private spaces uh, based on their biological sex taken away to accommodate um transgender people i can understand why that would be something they don't want uh but you know so so from a practical perspective i do agree with with destiny but kind of from i guess an empathetic uh, perspective i think that he's missing some of the concerns that many women would actually have god trans issues are unreal like it's such a good way to expose somebody that's like spent like any 
amount of time thinking about any of these issues whatsoever. It's especially funny when you run into like a facts over feelings. Some of the stuff I was getting Sargon to like admit to, which props to Sargon, at least he was actually owning his positions. But like, um, when Sargon is literally saying things, because because I'm asking him, like, wait a second, you think like being a woman means like being able to give children? What about like an infertile woman? Does this challenge that category at all? And he's like, well, I guess they're less of a woman then if they can't do that. And I was like, wait, oh, okay. I didn't know you were going to bite the bullet on that one. Well, hold on, now I got to stop and think for a moment. Like, Jesus. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell to my video. Oh, I would say that I hope that I think about um, the issue. Uh... Thank you to my current patrons, Hannah Kirsten, Stephen, Nancy, Lizzie, Jessica, Constant, Adriana, Harper, Alex, Laika, Jane, George, Katie, Ryan, Vishnuvius, that famous survivor warned you about, Lily, Emily, Frederico, A, Evan, Philip, Anna, Sophie, Jamie, Pasta, Le oh, I thought that was going to be, I thought I was done, Lena, Julie, Dustin, Rashmi. You're all very appreciated. Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can!